Okay. So uh, everyone, thank, thanks for being here today. Um, I'd like to start with this question. How many people own a car? How many people have a car? <laughs> oh, it seems 50%? Oh, it's much higher than that I expected. All right. <laughs> so I have a car too. And my car is a uh, Honda Civic Type R. Uh, so <laughs> thanks, <laughs> Habesa. <laughs> thanks, Honda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the acceleration is very impressive because it has a turbocharged engine. <laughs> but there is something else. We need to accelerate more. <laughs> there is something else we need to accelerate more. What is that? Yes. OSS contribution in automotive industry, right? So today's topic is how to accelerate contribution in automotive industry. This is today's topic. All right. So uh, to discuss this topic, we have uh, five wonderful speakers from all around the world. <coughs> So I'd like to ask uh, each speaker to introduce themselves at first. Great. So first speaker is Philip San. Yeah. From ITAS Bosch, Germany. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So, so uh, as ITAS, most people don't know, um, it's a software mainly software company. We do a lot of software-defined vehicle activities. And it also belongs completely to Bosch, which means I only have a Bosch email address. I think that's the easiest way to explain it. And um, yeah, I'm there as a senior open source community manager, which means basically I look how to I get engineers into open source, which projects are of relevance, how can we contribute, where to contribute, how to set architecture, and how also to earn money with the whole topic, because it's not just for fun. Although it's a lot of fun, uh, we have to pay our bills. And I'm also the technical steering committee chair of the ELISA project in the Linux Foundation. And I'm advisory board member of the Linux Foundation Europe. So I spend most of my time in open source activities, a lot of them then in automotive and safety. That's the main part. Thank you very much. OK. So next speaker is Kusakabe san from Honda. I love it. And <laughs> yeah, so could you introduce yourself? Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Yuji Kusakabe from Honda Motor. So currently, uh, my position is uh, uh, IVI software uh, development team, and I'm chief architect. And last year, uh, Honda have get uh, open chain self certification. And this year, uh, op uh, Honda launched the OSPO in a Honda software development team. So currently, uh, I have a uh, OSPO tech lead. So that's all. Thank you. Thank you. And next speaker is Endo san. He's my boss. <laughs> from Toyota. Hello. Uh, I'm Master Endo from uh, Toyota OSPO. And I engage in uh, open source issue about uh, seven, eight years in Toyota, uh, like uh, AGL, uh, OIN, uh, Open Chain, and To Do, and so on. And uh, in this January, uh, we decided to set up the OSPO, and uh, I become a leader of the OSPO. And uh, uh, today, uh, I'm very interested in uh, our discussion. And uh, I uh, first time find it uh, Yamashita-san uh, have a uh, Honda car. So <laughs> I, I think uh, we have to develop more attractive car for Yamashita-san. <laughs> <laughs> this is very big homework for us. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Our next speaker is Mary Sun from Volvo, Sweden. Um, hi, I'm Mary Wang, uh, director of Open Source Ecosystem for Volvo Cars. I'm based in Sweden, um, had had a court place. Uh, I'm sorry, I think I bring the rain from Sweden to Tokyo. <laughs> Because in Sweden it rains a lot. But don't worry, I will bring it back when I live in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we have formed Osborn two years ago and focus on the open source compliance and contribution and collaboration area. So we run these three 
main area at the same time almost because it's not like you need to do this first and then this second. So it's no like strict bond between each areas. So today we are going to share with you how to accelerate the open source contribution to you. Hopefully you can have some takeaways. Thank you. Thank you. And next speaker is Ishi-san from Panasonic Automotive Systems. Yes, uh, hello, I'm Hiroki Ishii. Yeah, I have a uh, super long title shown as here. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I work at uh, Panasonic Automotive Systems, uh, which is a, a group company of Panasonic uh, focused on uh, automotive business uh, as a tier one supplier where I serve as a um, uh, open source expert engineer. And my role, uh, my main role involves uh, product development uh, using Linux, uh, such as uh, in vehicle infotainment systems. And also I'm uh, actively uh, contributing to the uh, Azure project as a member of uh, steering committee. And uh, in addition, I, I'm recently working for uh, creating OSPO in our uh, company. Yeah, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. And me, uh, my name is Yonasuke Yamashita from Toyota Motor Corporation. And actually, I'm mainly working on the research about the mathematical optimization. And also, I'm a member of the OSPO, so I'm working with Endosan. And I help internal engineers to, you know, to solve the OSS-related problems. Yeah. So that's it. So today I will moderate this session. So thank you for your cooperation and thank all speakers. Thank you. All right. So let's go to the background of this session. As you know, um, nowadays a lot of OSS is used in the automotive industry. For example, the ah, razor pointer. Yeah. For example, the AGL, Elisa, or Rust, or C++, or Linux. There's a lot. These are just a few examples, but you know, uh, there's truly a lot of OSs being used in the automotive industry. But however, the problem is there have been not much proactive contribution from the automotive industry. For example, right figure shows the, the ranking of the most active employers contributing to the Linux kernel, version 6.10. You can see a lot of names of you know, the big tech ID companies, but you will not find the, the names of the, uh, the companies from the automotive industry. So, but why? Are there any problems, issues specific to the automotive industry? For example, the conservative company culture or little knowledge or experience in OSS contribution or organization to support OSS contribution? I think there is um, a lot of you know, the reasons. So today, we would like to discuss the reasons, the reason why, and their solutions. All right. So let's move into the panel discussions. Again, please scan this QR, QR code in order to post your questions and comments in, at any time. And also, you can press the like button if you find a good question and comment. It will move up to the higher position of this page, right? OK. But, but first question I prepared. <laughs> I prepared the first question, yeah. So I ask this first question to all speakers. The first question is, what are, all right, sorry. What are the challenges in OSS contributions and what are ideas for solving them? What are the challenges, challenges in OSS contribution and what are ideas for solving them? It is very general questions, but I want to ask them. So 
first first one. <laughs> QR code? QR code, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, sorry, sorry. <laughs> so your question is Japanese, okay? So Yamasta-san ah, yeah. will uh, translate it. Me? Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, T. So, Eno-san? Yeah. Want to answer first? Okay. So one is a, a cultural issue because uh, uh, I think some company uh, in our industry is not familiar with the uh, contribution. So some uh, executives say, why you have to disclose our source code to the, in the public? Because we invest made many money for the developing the software. So uh, I think uh, that's uh, solution is, is that is uh, to uh, to to inform the pros uh, of the uh, contribution and uh, to tell the uh, what is a, a software development world has happened uh, is a very uh, important thing. And uh, of, at the same time, uh, our some engineer, uh, he, our some our industries engineer, hesitate to uh, to to up, 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 uh, upload a source code. Uh, they want to that, but uh, there is a few uh, process or rules inside the company, so it is take very long time. So some uh, engineers uh, will be uh, will give give up. So this is happen. So we have to uh, make the rules and the processes uh, inside the company's important things. Thank you, Marisa. Uh, very good speak. I think you mentioned the um, process and the culture. Uh, I think that is also very important and also as a base. Um, after you force the open source culture and uh, build the uh, automation process or make the engineers convenient, give them the easy life, I think you can start with uh, the other three point. The first one is about the data. The second is about the human resource. The third one is about the money. So the data means how or do you know how many open source are heavily used in your company? Without the data, you don't know the answer. You cannot just ask thousands or thousands of people, right? You need the data first, and then you filter, let's say, 10% of these open source are heavily involved in your products. Once you get the data, the next step is how many people are working on this area? Do you have enough people to join the community to try to govern this and take leadership, et cetera? And the next step is, does this community are strong enough? Do you, if you want to take the leadership of this open source project, do you want to hire more people or funding or give the community money, et cetera? And it is not an easy task because how to convince the sea level people is another challenge. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Sakabe-san? Yeah, uh, so I think uh, these topics are a lot of uh, issues in Japan because uh, maybe uh, it's very important point of uh, uh, internet proxy because uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah because this topic this topic is another countries are no issue to happen to in this case but uh, in Japan uh, IT policy is a very different culture and uh, other regions so in this case uh, uh, five years ago kana, I have uh, many uh, homework uh, of open source activity because uh, uh, before uh, our company is a very uh, hard uh, IT policy. In this case, uh, Git push is a very too difficult work to <laughs> in our company. And another uh, topic is uh, uh, good uh, open source culture have a uh, uh, manager side because uh, uh, I have uh, uh, many uh, experience about uh, AGL uh, advisory board member. So five years ago, uh, Murata-san, uh, Mizuyama-san, Munakata-san, and Tsubo-san is a, a board member. And uh, I, I have uh, many uh, listen to run to best practice open source project. So in this case, uh, current uh, Honda 
uh, OSPO is a, a, a good uh, open source minder because uh, I learned, uh, I, I uh, learned uh, many uh, open source activity in, in based on AGR activity. So I think uh, how finds a very good uh, manager, a uh, finder manager. <laughs> so this is a sort of this issue in Japan. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, I would add some other parts on it. As we had like with license compliance, that's what we deal with since a long time. And that's often where we stop in the way of utilizing open source. And for example, it's very hard to understand that if you don't invest into a project, that there is also <coughs> risk which you apply. And it's normally like if you speak in a management environment, you will say, we need to give back to community, but giving back is nothing which is understood in higher levels. It's like risk mitigation, uh, innovation enforcement, where, where can you drive things, where things are useful. So this is an element to just consider and sometimes just change the wording a little bit. We're still, still saying the same thing. Another thing which I see is like how to get them into a contribution world because automotive is also full of intellectual property, right? And we were born and growing up in an environment where we developed a lot of software on our own or we gave it directly to suppliers with strict contracts requirements and so on and still doing it on our own we we took open source software in but still we treated it as then suddenly like it being proprietary software in our environment we patched it we did local copies of it and so on so we never had the idea of giving it back so this is a mind change mind shift which we need and yeah, we, Mary said, like, what about the human resources? And I figured out that for me, um, as I'm more in the open and I'm speaking in panels, giving presentations and so on, there are actually people from, the, uh, from inside Bosch and ETAS which approach me. They just have heard about it and they start asking questions like, how can I contribute? Where is the way? So it's also a lot of education and even understanding because I feel there is a bunch of people which... And this is what I always experienced. They came and said, I'm contributing in my private life on open source project, not necessarily related to work, but they know how to do this. They just don't know how to do it in a company environment. And then when they come into the company, they know what they can do in private. They can just upstream something, and it's good. But in a company, you need to talk to the lawyers. Is it their supported license? Is there any IP rights? And what I saw as... Um, a resolution or a solution from some OEMs as well also already, they look in like, is there a clearance for certain technology areas? That they would say, this is something where there is no IP involved. And then they say, this is typically a license field which you can see. And then you could just check like, is this a proper license? Is this a proper technology area? In this way, peer reviews may be enough and you're allowed to upstream for like bug fixes and so on. And the last point before I finish is like finding the right community because you cannot simply put every engineer into every community. If it's just someone working in a device area and should send the first kernel patch mainline, you need a guiding hand. And by this, you sometimes should also look in like what environments are there. And we have uh, so many projects also in Linux Foundation with uh, AGL first to be named. It's an environment where you can learn something. You have the CIP project, which is strong in Japan. You can look into Yocto, and it helps you in language barrier, in community barriers, and so on. This is all solving a little bit the way bringing people to open source. Thank you. Um, so if I talk about our company. Uh, Panasonic is uh, actively uh, contributing to many open source projects, not only Asia, but yeah, something else. But when it comes to uh, code contribution, uh, it often um, heavily relied on the uh, voluntary work of uh, individual engineers as of now. And yeah, we aim to change that. Um, we aim to uh, uh, create, build some um, supportive uh, environment for th uh, those uh, engineers uh, by creating an OSPO and creating rules uh, by following uh, leading uh, companies 
gathered here and yeah, also uh, contributing with uh, communities like uh, Todo and OpenJ. And the other pers perspective is, uh, I'm feeling like uh, we, we all the industries uh, have to shift to the uh, upstream first development. I mean, um, we have to uh, avoid the long-term use of uh, old versions of so, uh, open source. Uh, because uh, fa it fundamentally lays the decoupling from the communities, and there are very limited chance to contribute. And yeah, it's it's not an easy task. And yeah, we have to change the uh, way of development uh, across all of the um, supply chain. So yeah, it, it's very hard. But yeah. Um, I think uh, cross-industry uh, discussion like this is crucial. All right, thank you very much. Um, there's a lot of questions. <laughs> yeah, so I will pick up the question which has the most good. All right, so from Van, 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 Vincent, from Vincent, uh, the question is, <laughs> do, do, uh, Hi, thank you. <laughs> Sorry about that. Do you think that that English language and cultural gaps, for example, more direct, direct communication style, are some blocker to OSS in Japan? Mm. I think it's a very good question. So, anyone can answer? Uh, so uh, maybe uh, different language, uh, for example, English is uh, uh, one of the key points. But uh, some open source community is uh, very friendly. So in this case, uh, one of AGL. <laughs> so my English, not, uh, <laughs> my English skills are not good, but uh, many people uh, help us and collaborate uh, uh, discussion in AGL community. So maybe uh, language, different language is uh, one key point, but uh, different time zone is a very critical point to our, oh. <laughs> our side. Oh, right, right. Mm. So many, time, uh, many times uh, deep night and very early morning uh, worldwide uh, open source community meeting times. So, so maybe I think uh, it's very uh, important point to, uh, in Japan side. Thank you very much. Isan, you want to answer? <laughs> yeah, I very much agree with Sakabe san. And yeah. <laughs> he pointed out everything. And I, I, I have one addition. So I think the, uh, to create the Lapa, uh, Japan local uh, community is very good way. Uh, I, I have found that 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 re, that's really working well. Uh, for example, uh, Open Chain Japan work, working group is yeah very good, and also Asia has the some uh, Japan local meetings. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Any other comments from the speakers? All right. Okay. Thank you. And another question is. Uh, how do you, ah, it, it, yeah, it is a very good question. How do you think OSS can contribute to business values? Always asked by managers. <laughs> I think this is an eternal question, right? <laughs> so I, I think okay. one part is already mentioned uh, with the risk mitigation. So, I mean, you would never, if you just take the traditional business, you make supplier contracts, right? You talk about warranties, uh, you have maybe escrow agreements and so on, so you just settle all the cases, what could happen if the supplier is no longer there and you make long years contracts and you pay for things. And for open source, you just take things without further discussion. So you um, have no idea what could happen. And I like, for example, the Yocto project, as we know that so many BSP parts are being based from silicon vendors and so on. And there is, last year there was a critical time where the community was not really having enough maintainers and the issues were just driving up and so on. And you need to show that you have fundamental elements and that you rely on this and that you just need to make sure that this is a healthy environment. And 
the part could be that you just say, okay, then I don't use this anymore when it's such a risk to do. But then you would develop on your own, and this is a high cost part. And the other thing which you need to say from the business value is, um, so we did sun on all of this when we do something the first time and we do something the second time. Um, and it, most likely, if you look in your company, it's the same. If you do the first and second time, you may have a 30% improvement of a lot of activities, mo sometimes more, sometimes less. And this means like the portability and the flexibility you can even quantify in a first estimate in your project plans. And then you can just say, OK, here's my project plan. When I develop it like I do, and now I replace things with open source. This you anyway do, but what you don't show is like what would be the cost without open source. You directly show the cost with open source. Um, then connected parts are a topic, right? You can say with connectivity, you have a lot of directives like radio equipment directives, cyber Resil resilience acts, like what we have in Europe, that you can show also you need to maintain things longer and you do common things. And that's maybe a main thing that you say, look at this. It's nothing which we want to do. We have to do. We have so many commonality. Let's better do this together for the same reason you source a supplier. And you can even say you create competition, because if you have multiple suppliers working on an open source technology rather than one with a proprietary element of software, that also gets into the business. And it's all these things you can quantify. All right, thank you. Ah, Mary Sam, please. It's a very interesting question. Uh, Osborne is not a product team. They don't, we don't sell products, we just uh, consume companies' money, right? <laughs> <laughs> but we save a lot of money for company by, for example, from the compliance aspects, um, reduce IP risk. You never know how much it will cost. It will cost you if something wrong, IP leakage, or you are sued by your competitors. <laughs> or other issues. The other way is like open source is share the development burden and the increase the output of the product itself. Think about nowadays, you know, all the um, advanced car or EV car based, like 90% of source code is open source. And the price of the car is still very expensive, right? And we still cannot afford like this great car. At least I cannot afford the most expensive one in Volvo car. So think about if we don't use open source in the car, and can we afford just the wheels? Maybe not. <laughs> so it's indirectly saved a lot of money for the company, I would say. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, um, and I, I think the other um, uh, merit would be the uh, hiring. So, I mean, um, if we uh, contribute or lead some uh, popular uh, open source project, then the name of company will be uh, widely known. And also there are many, so many uh, talented engineers around the open source community. So yeah, that's a huge merit, I think. And just tell one word on this, like you have the chance to hire the engineers. If you go to the university and say, can you work with Linux? There's a higher chance that the people have experiences during their time. Ask them if they can use Autosar. <laughs> <laughs> then, the, then you learn something for life and you can make sure you can do it the next 20 years or so. But uh, the question if you will be ever enabled for another industry or so. Uh, after hiring uh, is also important because uh, uh, some, if uh, some company can't uh, contribute to the community, uh, some engineer uh, feels uh, very boring. Uh, so in this period, uh, almost all innovation is come from the open source uh, open source world. So to secure that is a very important for keep uh, the competitiveness engineer uh, in our industry. Uh, this is I think. Right, thank you very much. So um, I, there are not so much time left, so let's go to the next question. Um, the question two is, uh, yeah, from a contributor's perspective, what do you think the solution might be? From the contributor's perspective, what do you think the solution might be? So uh, maybe she-san or Sakabe-san. 
<laughs> so as a contributor in a uh, industry, I want uh, how to say um, some reasonable rule for contributions in uh, industries. I mean, so right balance because, uh, between uh, efficiency and risk avoidance. I, I mean, so um, I in general, uh, automotive industries tend to focus very much on risks, um, and it often uh, conflict with the uh, nature of open source. So, yeah, if if we can build some uh, yeah, well-structured rules or and uh, best practices, uh, which uh, fit for both um, auto industries and uh, contributors, and uh, make the contribution from industries to be a um, exciting job, then it will be fantastic. Yeah, I think. Thank you. So uh, I have. Uh, to uh, idea. Uh, first is uh, changing uh, IT policy uh, without no proxy <laughs> <laughs> is first. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, second is uh, uh, so collaborate uh, R&D team and uh, real product software engineering team because uh, maybe some, uh, I think some uh, case, uh, software development have a very good uh, budget. <laughs> but R&D department is uh, um, sometimes uh, uh, budget uh, cut. So some happen to uh, uh, many times. So I think uh, collaborate uh, R&D and the software development team, uh, this one team, and find to uh, same open source project and finding a uh, budget. So in this case, a uh, very uh, helpful uh, engineering support. So that's all. OK, thank you very much. OK, so oh, there's a lot of questions. So the next one is, oh, I, th oh, I think this is a very good question, too. Um, how do you think, uh, from Anonymous, and how do you think that hardware-dependent information are difficult to disclose due to the vendor's policy? It might be a general question. Yeah. I, I guess this is really a major concern and also limiting a lot of our activities. And it's hardware vendor and IP provider. And one prominent example may be GPU drivers, right? Because we often receive GPU binaries. We get spec. We do not even see the source code. It's not even that you can share it with the outside. It's even that it's not available to the inside. And this can be a very challenging element. But you can also see like that you can use a momentum if there's currently a drive from OEM perspective to say, we would like to see this. And you start working with a strong open source company. And this company says, we have upstream first. And it's much harder if I'm at Bosch side, then it's hard to say I want to have upstream first. But if I would wear a red hat, for example, then I could just say, well, you know, we spend a lot of efforts, we have strong commitments, and we are this. And that's actually what I heard. Well, then we, you need to open things to us, otherwise we're not talking to you. But also these companies meet others and say, okay, we have still issues in uh, getting the information, and this is all under NDA, even what they do in the kernel environment. So this is a very strong issue, and it will, uh, so I would say, as long as it keeps close, we have issues in maintaining products over 10, 15, or longer years, because will we really get a binary update after 10 years? Thank you very much. Are there any Mm. Uh, so as, as a um, Linux kernel engineer, um, I hate uh, out of three modules or <laughs> proprietary modules. Um, but uh, as a um, automotive engineer, I uh, pretty much understand the reason. <laughs> so, but yeah, but yeah, in, in general, we have to yeah solve the that kind of problem. We have to make that uh, modules to be upstreamed uh, step by step. 
otherwise yeah the, it, it, it's a I, I think it's a big uh, one of the big reasons of the yeah, fragmentation of yeah, open source. Um, I think from two aspects, from the receiver aspects, where you receive the ECU hardware, sometimes when you ask your supplier, uh, do you have have you included any open source in this hardware, embedded or drive drive software driven or whatever? You already got to answer, no, we don't have any. But we don't have right to scan or get their source code anyway. So we have to choose trust. Uh, the other point from the supplier aspects, how about their open source process and policy? Do they have all of this in place? Do they understand what we are asking them? So yeah, that's why it's difficult for a hardware company to disclose the open source not to mention the open source contribution part. Yeah. So uh, I don't know a uh, correct uh, number of years uh, uh, about IO topics, but uh, maybe five or six years ago, Panasonic Ms. Yama-san presentation uh, about IO uh, virtualization one approached. Uh, so in this result, this year, uh, AGL, uh, Android, and another uh, open source project are running on AWS and another uh, cloud solutions. So this is maybe this is a very good approach to uh, define one of our uh, standard API and interface. So in this case, a uh, uh, hardware vendor, uh, some hardware vendor, and the BSP uh, support uh, uh, about IO solutions. So maybe this is uh, one of uh, very good uh, approach in this case. OK, thank you very much. And uh, there's a little time left, so uh, it, it is the last question. So. Uh, yes, yes, question four. From the car manufacturer's perspective, I mean the OEM, from the OEM perspective, how would you prefer car supplier to act? It's a very difficult question. <laughs> Maybe Endo-san, Mary-san, Kusakabe-san. Uh, so I think uh, it is not uh, I, I, I can say not only for the suppliers, but also for all OEMs. So I think uh, each company has a strong point, and each, com each company has a technology can disclose. So I think uh, to promote inside the company and, uh, uh, and with promote uh, with our industry is a very important thing. That's all. Thank you. This is a very good question. Uh, from the OEM's perspective, if I own shares of our company, then, okay, I'm standing for Volvo Cars. In this case, I think the core is make money. The core is reduce cost. And how our supply, like Bosch, what you can do for us to reduce the cost? Join the open source community. Not only you, but also together with the OEMs, have put many things as much as possible for standardization, the same specification, same development process, mm. right? Shared the burden in this case. And then when the company win, of course, our salary will increase. <laughs> 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 Thank you. So uh, I have uh, one uh, message, uh, changing uh, mindset, uh, uh, open fast and uh, changing IT policy. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, a good uh, find a uh, very good uh, manager. That's all. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> OK, so it, I think it is good time to close this session. But before the closing session, I have uh, one announcement. So uh, we probably announced the uh, AGL OSPO expert group has launched. The purpose of this expert group is the same as this session, topic of the session. How to accelerate the open source software contribution to, uh, from the automotive industry. So you can join uh, from this QR code, so you can scan the QR code. 
and you can uh, subscribe to the mailing list, and also you can join the Discord channel. So uh, yeah, thank you for the, your kind attention, and uh, please give the speakers a big round of applause. Thank you very much. <clears throat>